Hi everyone, Jim with CD Nova Instruments again, and today we're looking at the differences between the I series and the IQ series operation menus. So on the left we have the model 450i H2S analyzer, and on the right we have the model 42iQ NOx analyzer. And if we come in a little closer, I'll look at the I series menu first. And what we have is push buttons. One of the biggest differences with the I to the IQ is that the I series uses up down arrows and menu buttons to access the, the menus in the software. So if we go into the menu and we just go down to, for example, calibration, press enter, and we have the Cal CS background, Cal CS coefficient. coefficient. CS is combined sulfur. Uh, so if I want to zero this instrument, I'll just simply press enter and go in and sample zero. Sampling zero air, I'll be uh, hitting enter just to zero the instrument to adjust the zero background coefficient. I go back one screen, go down to Cal CS coefficient. This is where I would be sampling calibration gas. I have a preset value of 80 ppb. And I would just simply press enter to adjust my high point 80 ppb coefficient. And then I'd be able to go back a few screens and look at calibration factors. And there would be my coefficients. My background coefficient, 21.6. And my CS coefficient, 1.073. Now if I was to do this on the IQ series, uh, this is the 42 IQ NOx, there are no more push buttons, manual push buttons, there is now software buttons, so they have the top button on these instruments, these IQ series, is the calibration button. I push that, the first thing I see is calibrate backgrounds, calibrate span coefficients, now there's an advanced calibration, and zero span schedule. So if I was going to do the background adjustment, I would just simply touch Cal backgrounds. And since it's a NOx analyzer, it gives me a choice of calibrate NO and calibrate NOx. So I can press calibrate NO. If I'm sampling zero air, I would just simply hit the green calibrate button and it would adjust my background. I can go back, go into calibrate NOx, and the same thing if I'm sampling zero air, I'll just press the green calibrate button and it will adjust my NOx background. And it even gives you the, the target concentration of zero, the uh, current NO background, and the cal calculated background if I was to do the adjustment. So there's some differences right there between just calibrating the IQ compared to the I series. And if you get lost in the menu system, just press the, the home button in the top left. It will take you right back to the main screen again. Going back to the I series. If we were to look at the alarms menu on the I series, they have the alarms right below. There's a button right below the alarm heading. And it will show me right away how many alarms detected and if they're okay whether they're high or low temperatures, pressures, flows, lamp intensity. And if I were to look over at the I-Series, the alarms menu button can be quickly accessed by this check mark. So if you see a green check mark here, everything's okay. Um, if there was an alarm, there'd be a triangle, like a red triangle with an exclamation point in the center. And then you can still, you can touch that and it will take you into status and alarms. So if I look at status and alarms, any of these would be lit up with an alarm if there was an incident. So if I look at NO2 converter, this would be highlighted in red if there was a low alarm, low temperature alarm, or high temperature alarm. But everything is good, it's within the maximum limits. I can go back, I can look at the reaction chamber temperature. Again, everything is good in this case. If there was a high low alarm, there would be a red indication whether it's a low, low temperature or a high temperature alarm go back again. We press the home button, take us back to the main screen. So if we go back and look at the i-series one more time, looking at the data on the i-series you would need to have Thermos iPort software loaded onto a laptop and then a cable connected to the back port to download the, uh, the data. 
You can view the data on the i-series. Just simply press menu, go down to instrument controls, and then go to data logging settings. And in this data logging screen, there is a view data log data. If I press enter, I can look at number of records. I can say, show me 10 records back. Just change that to a one, press enter. And here's the data. Uh, it shows the time, date, any flags. And again, you have to use the arrow keys to, to scan the data. So if I press the right arrow, it'll show me the SO2, the H2S, the CS combined sulfur which is the H2S reading on this H2S analyzer, which is labeled as CS. And there's my data, like 5.018. And it uses uh, exponents for the, the decimal placement on this. And so if I can arrow down, I can look through the data on the I-series. And again, if you want to download an Excel file, you can, uh, you have to connect iPort to the back of the instrument, download the DAT file, and then open it with Excel. So on the IQ, the data can be accessed by simply plugging in a USB stick into the front panel and the analyzer will recognize it right away. And then you can do a quick data download. But to view the data, to simply press the data button, you can view data log, last hour, and it will pull up the columns of data that you can see here. So I can look at all these columns of data and I can also graph it. There's a word graph right above the column so if I press graph it actually graphs the data for me. So it's a quick snapshot to look at not only your diagnostic data but you can look at your readings, your high point, you can look at your calibration while you're doing the high mid low cal. So it's a great visual and quick snapshot of all the data in this unit. That graph was instrument temperature. And I can go right arrow and look at all the other, you can set up lots of other data points as well on this instrument. Here's pressure, here's a pressure graph. So a quick snapshot of looking at the data. And you, you can hook ePort to the instrument to download the data from the back panel uh, ethernet port, but it's not necessary if you have a USB stick it's much quicker to just connect it to the front panel USB port and then download the data straight to that stick, which you can now look at it with the spreadsheet. So that is a few of the quick differences with the IQ and the I-Series. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Thank you.